All right, everybody, I'm back. That was kind of a weird thing. This is the Country Fried Gamers again. Uh, this is JW talking about the next part of the Guarding the Realm chapter pack, the second uh, ch second chapter pack in the Blood and Gold cycle of Game of Thrones, a uh, living card game. Um, I couldn't figure out how to attach this to the back end of the other one, so here we go. We'll just keep going from here. All right. Um, guarding the Realm. So it is uh, an event, Loyal, Night's Watch, two gold, marshalling action, choose a character with printed cost three or lower in an opponent's discard pile, and put it into play under your control. After you win a challenge as the defending player, pay one gold to return guarding the realms from your discard pile to your hand. You know, it's, it's fair. You know, I don't mind it at all. Two gold to get a three goss character. Um... There is no stipulation that it has to be non-loyal, so I can get behind this. Um, Night's Watch players are going to win challenges as the defending player, and as a Night's Watch player, I find myself that I am usually up a gold. I don't know how, but you know, I steal a lot of gold and I make a lot of gold. And you know, Forest Hunter is my bestest friend in this deck, um, so it's an it's an interesting card. I will definitely play around with this. Um, I kind of like it as a one-of, uh, definitely since it's recursive, and recursion is the best, you know, when it comes to attrition games like Game of Thrones. So, all right, let's see the next ones. Ooh, now we're into Baratheon. Um, I'm really excited about this card, actually. It's a different take on the uh, other Melisandre. So we have Melisandre. She's a lady. She's Rolor. She's seven gold cost, intrigue icon, power icon, six strength, insight. It's clever. Um, she's loyal. She has a reaction. After you win the dominance, um, choose an opponent and look at his or her hand, then choose and discard one card from that hand. If that card is a character, place it in the owner's discard pile. Um, this ability is really strong. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of boring, you know, so you have to, I don't really like the Baratheon do nothing deck, um, where it's all about just winning dominance over and over again. Um, you know, Pairs up really well with Night's Watch. Uh, when you can do that, you just gain a bunch of power passively, and you just win challenges and you win dominance and stuff. So um, I like this card, though, uh, as a six-strength insight. Um, you know, she doesn't have to be standing for this ability to go off. So uh, maybe with this kind of card, you can make a more aggressive dominance-based deck. Um, I see the parts being there. I don't know if it's going to be good, but I can definitely see the parts being there. So... Little steep at seven. Baratheon's got a lot of good seven gold cost characters. Makes me wonder which one would I choose, you know, or which ones will I choose to to play in this deck. So, but you know, I'm definitely going to test the uh, the crud out of this card. I think it's a lot of fun. All right, our next um, Baratheon card, uh, two gold attachment called Lord of the Light or Light of the Lord. Sorry, Blech. Uh It is a blessing. It's Relore. It, can only attach onto Baratheon or R'hllor characters only. Reaction. After the dominance phase begins, stand, attached character, and gain one gold. You know, there have been a fair amount of cards for R'hllor that are all about spending gold in the dominance phase, and this gives you that gold. Um, it is another R'hllor card. I don't see more than one of these. I, I would really have to test a lot with R'hllor, and I, I play the R'hllor package a good chunk, a very good chunk. Um, I like that package a lot. I kind of um, side it into or make it be the banner of a lot of the decks I play, um, just because I like the uh, I like the idea of it. I like the flavor of it. Um, it's interesting to me. Uh, I like kneeling. Kneeling is very strong in this game, very strong, especially since um, Valar has come. So I I'm definitely going to test this card. Um, a one of, maybe a two of. So, because it, it just does things. Um, but I don't think you need more than that. Especially since there's already, you know, cards in, in the Rulor package that stand themselves. So, alright, I'll definitely try it. Um, I don't know if it's good, though. But I'll definitely try it, really. Alright, now we're into the Lannister cards. We have um, Pullover. Uh, he's an ally. He's Lannister, non-loyal. Three gold cost. Military icon, intrigue icon, three strength. He's got pillage, that interestingly boring 
uh, keyword that doesn't quite do something yet, but it looks like we're going to be getting some stuff done. So we have reaction. After pullover discards a card using pillage, return two gold from the losing opponent's gold pool to the treasury. See, that's a good attempt to do something, but most of the games that I play against, um, there is not a lot of gold in my opponent's gold pool left. Maybe one. So, and they're usually using their gold on the first time I attack into them. And so, I don't know about this card. Um, he's definitely, he, he's, yeah, I think he's fine at, as a bicon for three gold and three strength. You know, I'd play him, you know, as a one of. You know, and, and I, I like Lannister. I play a lot of Lannister. I just don't know about that guy. Um, so then we have their second Lannister card, uh, Location, King's Landing card. Uh, the Hands Solar. Yep, that's what it's called. Unique uh, location. Two gold cost. Uh, action. Kneel the Hands Solar to choose a character until the end of the phase. That character gains an Intrigue icon. Eh, seems alright. Sometimes it'd be nice to give the Mountain Intrigue. It stops a lot of things. Um, you know, give the Hound Intrigue. That's pretty good too. So, I like that. Um, and it's a card, you know. I don't think I'll play it, but I can see it finding space in some kind of deck. So, all right, because of you, generally, I guess, going back to this, uh, I would already have plenty of Intrigue Icons in the deck that I was playing already, so I don't know if we need it. All right, so then we have uh, the Greyjoy cards now. We have Wex Pike, you know, he is a Bastard, House Botley, two gold, uh, military icon, Intrigue Icon, two strength, bestow eight. So much bestow. When Wex Pike is attacking, each character with printed cost X cannot be declared as a defender. X is the number of gold West Pike has. Um, dominance action. Move one gold from your gold pool to West Pike. Limit twice per phase. All right, so um, this is kind of a trappy card. I'm, I'm just going to say it. Um... Because it doesn't say with printer costs X or lower. So you're kind of just setting it so that you can um, stop particular blockers. Um, like three gold cost ones or, or six gold cost ones if they got some fatties out there. Um, I think it needed to say uh, X or less. So that you can just make it a general swing by guy. Um, and then, you know, he's not that hard to kill because he's a two gold cost guy. So... Um, I don't think I'll be playing this card. So it's just a thing. It's an interesting card, but I can... Maybe they didn't goof. Maybe they did that on purpose and they found in testing it was kind of broken. I could see it being broken if it was X or less. But it's not good without it. And I'll probably get chewed up for that by my Greyjoy players. They'll prove me wrong. All right, our second Greyjoy card. Um, it is Iron Islands Market. Loyal card. Of course it is because it makes gold. Um, two gold cost. Iron Islands card. Limited. Marshalling action, Neil Iron Islands Market, that's kind of hard to say, to gain one gold, two gold instead, if an opponent has eight or more cards in his or her discard pile. Ooh, it's an attempt to make pillage a, a valuable keyword. Um, makes gold, it'll pay for itself in two turns. Uh, one turn if it's got uh, the conditions met. You know, it's not unique, it's, it's a card. I'll probably end up playing it. Um, money's money. All right, our first Targaryen card is uh, Second Sons, um, Mercenary, three gold cost, military, power icon, uh, strength six, bestow three, forced interrupt. These are always tricky. Um, when the challenge phase ends, sacrifice Second Sons unless you discard one gold for it. So it's, uh, it's on a timer. Um, it will give you a big upside for one turn. Uh, if you want it like that, or you're going to have to pay more to keep it around. You know, I think it captures the mercenary theme pretty well. Um, I don't know if I like it or not, because there's, there are other better cards, I think, that I want to be paying six gold for. Um, you know, for a six-strength character with military power. So, and no other abilities. So it's kind of a vanilla card, so it's just a beater. So, I don't know if it's good or not. I probably won't play this card. This card, though is Nutter Butters. All right, so uh, it's an event, Targaryen, loyal, 
It's titled, A Dragon is No Slave. Two gold cost. Challenge is action. Choose a character without attachments. That character gets minus two strength until the end of the phase. It's not even a character that's participating. It's just a character without attachments. Whew. That's pretty good. I'll go ahead and, and kill your uh, claim soap. And then, what do you know? All right. Then it also has reaction. After you win a challenge in which you control a participating dragon character or Daenerys Targaryen, pay one gold to return a dragon is no slave from your discard pile to your hand. This card is good. It is very good. I will play three of these. This I like this card a lot. It costs two gold, but there are many ways to get around that. So I like it a lot. That will make the burn deck. The burn deck. So, so now we go into our um, Martell cards. We have um, Orphan of the Green Blood, Ally, uh, character, two gold cost, power icon, two strength. Bestow three. Action, discard one gold from Orphan of the Green Blood to return another character you control to its owner's hand. Um, I can see the Trixie on this. Um, I definitely could. Uh, I could see myself bouncing my um, certain uh, Martell characters, uh, especially the one, oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, the dude holding the axe when he comes into play uh, from ambush, uh, take somebody out of the challenge. His name escapes me right now. Uh, but there are other characters in um, Martell that I want to balance back to them. my hand, especially ones that draw me cards or filter through my deck or do other such nonsense when they come into play. I'll play this. It's, it's not a bad card. You know, I can pay it for one extra and do it once, and it, I feel like the value has been made. You know, it's a good card. Um, our next Martell card, Scorching Deserts. Um, it's a Dorn card. One gold cost, location, reaction. After a character with fewer than two challenge icons is declared as an attacker or defender, kneel and sacrifice Scorching Deserts to remove that character from the challenge. I like this card a lot in an aggressive deck. I really do. Um, it's good at keeping people from coming in. I mean, because it doesn't straighten them, it just removes them, and they're still melt. So this card, I think, is, is solid. I'll play this card, and I'm going to test it at three and see where I go from there. Um, definitely in a, in an aggressive Viper deck. So I like this card. All right, so now we have a neutral character, um, Black Walder, House Frey, four gold cost character, military icon, intrigue icon, three strength, bestow three. During the challenge, third challenge, and in, you initiate each phase, Black Walder gains renown and gets plus two strength for each gold he has. This was the card that was made to go with Lords of the Crossing. Oh my goodness, this card is good. I like this card. I will play a lot of this card. I play a lot of Crossings decks. Um, I like this card a lot. Um, I think he's very good. I think it's very good. I, I enjoy it. I like the flavor. So, uh, yeah. All right. This is the location that I was all a Twitter about for, um, for this chapter pack. All right. So, Great Hall. Non-unique. Westeros. One gold cost location. Limited. Marshalling action. Kneel Great Hall to reduce the cost of the next unique character you marshal this phase by one. By two instead if that character's printed cost is six or higher. Whoa. Most of my decks are 70% unique characters anyway. You know, this card is good. I like this card. I want nine of these so I can put them in play set in all my decks. Um, and I tend to have three decks so I can always have a three-person game going. Uh... I like this card a lot. I, I'm just going to gush about this card. Uh, it is great economy. Granted, it is limited, um, but when you're playing a lot of the fatties, this card um, just pays for itself. I mean, it pays for itself on the first turn, and then, but you're making money. You're making gold, I guess, uh, with each subsequent turn after that. And it's not limited, or not limited, it's not unique. Wow. Wow, I like this card a lot. I like this card. I might like this card more than I like the King's Road. So, I'll have to see. I'm, I'm going to test. I'm going to test like crazy, but I like it a lot. All right. All right, now we have a, a neutral uh, event, one gold cost. The Dornishman's Wife. It's a song, action, choose an opponent. If that player has higher power total, has a higher power total than you, gain two gold. 
if that player has more cards in his or her hand than you, gain one power for your faction. If that card, if that player controls more characters than you, draw one card. That's a card that does things. Um, I'll try it. You know, I'll put it in my decks and stuff like that and see if it has any value. But offhand, I don't see it doing anything. It does a lot of stuff, but it doesn't really do anything. You know, I'm probably totally wrong on that, but that's how I feel when I evaluate this card. It just doesn't do anything. But I love the art because it's a song and it's got this kind of tapestry-like art. It is my... Um, I'm loving the flavor of it. I love it. All right, then our final card is um, the plot for the deck. It is uh, the Annals of Castle Black. It's a legacy traded card. Interesting. I don't know how many legacy ones we have. It has four gold production, four initiative, one claim, seven reserve. Each player may play events from his or her discard pile as if they were in his or her hand. I love it. I love being able to recur, and this card is good at that. And I like to play a lot of events in my decks. I can see myself playing this. Thank you, uh, Alexander Hines. Thank you so much. This is a good card. All right, so forced reaction. Also, I forgot about this part. After an event is placed in the discard pile, remove it from the game. Um, that's actually super important, I think. Otherwise, broken shenanigans could happen. But yeah, should have read the forced reaction. Uh, I just got excited about it straight. Whew. I like it a lot. Um, I'm going to be testing this card a lot. I, I, I really like it. I really, really like it. So, um, it does good things in uh, Tyrell. It does really good things in um, Targaryen. Uh, I could see it having some legs in both Stark and um, Night's Watch, but I really like it in Targaryen. I really like it. Um, I like those events, you know, just getting things back, recurring things, and it's already a recursive deck. So, uh, yeah, I really like it. Um, overall, I enjoy this chapter pack a lot. I don't really like all the chapter packs that come out. Sometimes there's only a couple of cards that I like, but this one uh, has a lot of cards that I really enjoy, and I'm going to play a good um, hearty chunk of them. Uh, I noticed that this is just the second part of, of this uh, opening, and I've already gone super long already, so... This is JW from Country Fried Gamers uh, trying to uh, open this up and evaluate some cards and maybe you might find my uh, opinions useful, but probably not. Most people don't. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them, um, especially about the things I suggested about rulings. Uh, please let me know. Um, thank you so much. Bye.